Hi, this is Michelle with Moonlight Makes, and it is finally getting toward the autumn time. And if you are a New Mexican, you know that what that means is balloons filling our skies. So today we wanted to share this really sweet little craft for you or with you, where we not only do some embroidery, some very simple embroidery, but we also paint our balloons a bright yellow. I'm so excited to get started, and I cannot wait to see your work. Before we begin our masterpiece, let's check out all the fun things that we have in our kit. The first is a four inch embroidery hoop. The second is a duck fabric or a piece of duck fabric that has the design already drawn in on pencil. We've got some acrylic paint, which we'll use later, and we've got a paintbrush. In our bag, we have all of the things that we're gonna need to do to, or to start embroidering. We have a needle threader, which is super useful. We have a skein of black embroidery thread, and we have an embroidery needle. This needle is a little bit bigger than what we would normally use for a sewing needle. The one thing that you are going to need to provide is a pair of scissors. That'll make everything complete and perfect. So before we get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our duck fabric and we're gonna put it on our hoop. So we will unscrew our hoop. We'll put our pattern on over the bottom hoop and we're just gonna push the top hoop right on down. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a good idea if it's nice and taut. So then I'll screw in the screw to make it nice and tight and I'll adjust it just like so. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna thread it. So I like to start with a piece of thread that is about two feet long, any longer than that, and you wind up with a whole bunch of knots generally. So if we need to use more than two or two or three feet, usually it's just best to cut it. So I'm gonna take this thread and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna divide it. So for this particular embroidery piece, we're gonna use three strands of this embroidery thread. So I'm actually pulling it apart just like so. And so I literally have twice the amount of embroidery thread that I or lost that I started with. This will create lines that are just a little bit more, um, more easy to work with and prettier and a little bit thinner. So I'll put the embroidery floss that I don't need off to the side. And then I'm gonna take my the floss and I'm gonna take my needle threader. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it through the needle. Then I'm gonna put my floss through the large needle and I'm gonna pull it through. And that's gonna make it so that it's super easy to thread this needle. Now on the bottom, I'm just gonna put a little knot in the end. That's gonna make things a lot easier. And what we're gonna do for this particular project is just to use a back stitch. And a back stitch is one of the most common embroidery stitches that we have. So I'm gonna start on the basket. And so I'm gonna come right up on this corner. And then I'm gonna come right on down. So make just a first over stitch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up on the second stitch and I'm going to go back down right beside my first stitch. That way I have a line that's nice and solid. So I'm going to do this all the way around the basket and then all the way around the balloon and it's gonna create this really fun little pair pattern. If you want to make the pattern of the basket a little bit more intricate, feel free to add your own special touches. On this balloon, I added just a few little hash marks to make it look like the basket was more round, but you can also add some diagonal lines or some hatch marks or whatever you want to make this balloon all yours. 
we're just gonna keep stitching all the way around the basket. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing throughout the entire balloon. Now you'll notice I'm getting short on thread. I'm gonna show you one easy way so that I can restring my needle and finish up this little project. I'm gonna turn my embroidery project over and all I'm gonna do is just slip my needle underneath the rest of the thread. I'm gonna do this three or four times. That way you can't see this on the front of the piece, but it kind of ties this thread off nicely. And then what I'll do is I'll cut it close. And then I'll really make sure that the thread isn't going anywhere, but it doesn't get all crazy knotted. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip this right over here. There we go. duck fabric just to make this a little bit more taut because as I was embroidering I definitely lost some of the strength to the fabric or the tautness of the fabric so I just retighten that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the basket now one thing that I've noticed is we're gonna take I also have a glass of water and my paintbrush one thing that I've definitely noticed is that if the canvas gets too wet what will happen is that the color will bleed away from where we actually want it to go. That said, if the canvas is too dry, it won't really um, kind of create that watercolor effect that we're looking for. So what I'm doing is I'm adding my paint where I want it to go, and then I'm adding just a little bit of water to kind of water it out. I also have a nice little paper napkin over here, a paper towel, a napkin, even toilet paper will do. And one of the things that are often done when we're painting is we'll just kind of give it a little dab. That way the paint doesn't get to hang out on the fabric too much because if it does, it winds up bleeding. And you can see on this particular project where that's happened a little bit. So we're gonna try to avoid that as much as possible. So now that my basket is where I want it to be, and if I wanted to add a little bit more color, I could just do that. So when you're kind of painting on this sort of canvas, you wanna add color slowly so that it doesn't go all crazy and bleed all over your fabric. You also wanna kind of avoid, you, you wanna keep it as close to inside of the line as you possibly can, so that that, fab, or that that paint stays right within the lines. And I'm just gonna kind of dab it dry. Oh, I'm so excited to see how this turns out. Then I'm gonna take my yellow and I usually, when I'm painting, because I'm a lazy, lazy painter, as I usually like to start with the lighter colors and move into the darker ones, that way if they blend, that way I don't have to wash out my brush too much. And I can just kind of go from lighter to darker because the yellow won't really be seen in the blue. So notice how I'm just kind of adding more water, but not necessarily adding paint. I'll dab it dry as I keep going. Does anybody else have the song 99 Red Balloons that go by in their head? Every time I work on a balloon project, I know it's not the same, but it always sticks in my head. Also, 
if you wind up getting some paint on the embroidery floss, like I just did, you can absolutely just add a little bit more water, dab it dry, and it'll pretty much go away. That's one of the nice things about this. Now that my balloon is nice and painted, I'm gonna add the sky. So I'm gonna take my blue brush And I'm just going to paint some happy little clouds all throughout this particular piece. I really feel like minimal is better. And then I'll just add some more water to kind of brush it away so that we don't have big dabs of paint. And then I'll definitely do a lot of like dabbing the pigment away because we don't want the balloons to go into the clouds. We don't want the colors to mix there, but we definitely want to create this watercolor type effect. And notice what I just did there. I added paint, but I didn't add the water fast enough. So I'm just going to kind of scrub this canvas a little bit to try to get that pigment to kind of bleed a little bit so that it doesn't look like there are big blobs of dark paint. basket it's kind of like the brown and the blue are really excited to see each other they just want to mix but I'm not really down with that so I've got to keep everybody on their right side is as the paint dries it changes just a little tiny bit so don't be afraid to go back and just do a little bit of touch up do a little bit more dabbing but let it kind of sit first all right I'm super happy with this little guy I'm looking forward to hanging it up on my wall but I'll wait until it dries and then I'll show you how to finish this hoop off and we will hang it up and it'll be beautiful. All right, once we are happy with our little balloon and the way that it's turned out, there are lots of different ways that you can finish your embroidery hoop, but I'm gonna show you one of the most simple ways that I have ever seen. And that is that all we're gonna do is just cut out the fabric from the outside. Just like that. We're just gonna cut off away any excess fabric. Now, if you wanted to take this off the hoop and do something fun with it, you totally can. Sometimes I see people framing their hoops. But for this particular one, all I'm gonna do is just cut around. And if you wanna finish it even more, what you can do is you can just take some glue. Any, even Elmer's glue will do just fine. And just add a little drop all the way around the 
fabric and kind of push it down onto the frame. And that'll keep this back so that it doesn't really go anywhere. Even if you don't add the glue, it's gonna be just fine. But now, all I need is a little push pin and I can totally hang this little balloon up. Fun. Thank you so much for joining us and we are so excited to see your own creations.